do a video thing. Um, you're one of the, I think, four? Four patients who received medical marijuana from the federal government of the United States. My marijuana is grown at the University of Mississippi. Um, there are four of us, and all of us have to have extensive medical records, which we're really not allowed to be keep kept. We'll have to have reliable doctors, and they don't tend to call reliable doctors if they dare to work on marijuana. And still, we were able to prove to FDA, DEA, and NIDA, all three agencies, that marijuana is the most reliable, uh, um, the most reliable, and uh, the safest part of our treatment. Well, so why is it that if they can give medicine to you and the other people in the compassionate program, why can't they let us have it? The, but the program was opened in the 60s and was kept very secret until a man called Robert Randall, who had glaucoma as I do, discovered it. And he sued the federal government after he got arrested for four little plans. And he won his suit, and so he became the first man to receive medical marijuana from the federal government. And he started an organization to educate people, but it moved very slowly. Uh, in 82, another person received the medical marijuana from the same agency. And then that, it was between that and 88 that I became the third patient and the first woman in the program. Uh -huh. So it took forever to get in there. And uh, then it grew very quickly because my case got a tremendous amount of publicity. And also because here in California, Dennis Perron was already working with eight patients. And that really was an epidemic at the time. And he had passed. Uh, Proposition B in 1991 already here, so they received a tremendous amount of applications from the eight patients, and James L. Nel um, James L. Mason, who was then head of uh, human services at the time, told the president they had to stop the program because now they were giving it to people with AIDS and they were going to get high and infect the rest of society and on that basis they would stop. Lucky for me, the ones that were in the program, I think there were 13 of us at the time, were kept in the program. Some of them had AIDS, they died. I know of one that dropped out of the program because he just couldn't stand the medical mar uh, marijuana from the government. And others have died. Anyway, there's only four of us now. Wow. Yeah, that was really compassionate of them, wasn't it? To, to can't give it to AIDS patents because they might infect other people. Well, I was and so blatant, the mistreatment of patients, the way we are discriminated, discriminated. We are always guilty of proven innocent, unlike anyone else in our country. Uh, we are. We take priority to murders and now other people in our standing to go to the prison industry. We're easy targets, and they have the right to confiscate our properties that we work hard for all our lives and our belongings. They have the right to trample on our human rights, and somehow I know that that is not right. I know that Blackstone, no commentary, which is the basis of our laws here in the United States, clearly says that when a man-made law is contrary to the law of nature, it has no validity anytime, anywhere, under any circumstances. And you cannot call yourself the land of the free, Mr. Obama, and every one of you, if you're going to incarcerate 800,000 people a year for choosing a wiser bud. If I'm not hearing the stories of the 2,000 people whose, deep, whose lives were wrecked, what is that going to cost me financially? A third of your deficit. A third of your deficit. A third of your deficit. Are you listening? It's the war on us. And stop calling it, insulting our intelligence by continuing to call it a war on drugs. I don't see any war, any drugs going to jail. I definitely see lives ruined every day. I don't even get to read about 20 of the 2,000 lives you ruin every day with criminal records. You now have 25 million Americans. Americans in your system through probation or incarceration or detention. You got us all in your system like we're a bunch of really bad people. And when you have no respect with your loss for us, what are we supposed to do? You're outlawing the instincts of self-preservation. You are outlawing the principles of survival. You are telling us we cannot be responsible for our brothers and sisters. You are telling us we cannot have compassion. That's your corporation and the worshiping of your God, your green God of money. We will not put up with it anymore. If if we have to totally just work with the 99ers along with everyone else because the politicians' hands are too full of corporate money. 
You full of corporate money for your next elections to look at the real problems here. We have to do something. You've got to put an end to this insanity. All of us as citizens, but most of you, Mr. President, all of you congressmen, thank you for California stepping out for us and asking the president to end this insanity, the persecution on these people. I was arrested, I was detained uh, near Idaho doing a, a, a speaking in, that, uh, in northern Oregon. And then I learned, as my things were returned the following day, that with apologies from the lieutenant, he really felt bad. He said, Elvie, you have to understand, the government tells me that there is no such thing as medical marijuana in their beliefs. And here you are with a tin full of government marijuana proving that they lie. That they lie. So, yeah, I was there for that. And they took away my medicine. When they returned it, they told me, at that time, Obama said that if people complied with state laws, that we would not be hassled, would not be bothered. Well, the police was being told by, by federal authorities that they had to continue to stop and harass patients, that even if they were complying, if we were complying with state laws, they still could, should take our marijuana away and our, whatever they want to take away with no, with total impunity. It's crazy. It's not drugs. It's our medicine. It's our medicine. And I don't know of any other medicine that you feel so justified that you know more about my illness than my doctors do. And I don't think that's right. And neither does the European Union. I don't know where their stands are in country for country. I've been all over that union. Never had any problems. And I know that it's in September of '03 they made it so, whether it's marijuana or anything else. No, it wasn't about marijuana in particular. They would not hassle you if you had proof that you had a doctor, you know, a medical doctor who said this was your medicine, whether it's a prescription or a recommendation, just the signature of a federal uh, of a doctor. That's, that's yeah. a nice authority in health. I have never called the fire department to to take care of my medicine. Why am I why am I going to call the DEA to to regulate my medicine? They don't have the credentials to deal with me. They don't and they don't have the right at any level, at any level, to continue this destruction of humanity and the environment.